All right, so I have kind of a rough back plate there. So I have the torso, I have a joint for the arm, though I'm gonna replace that, that arm at the lower, the lower arm with something furry. So I need to start gathering more reference. I was also thinking something like um, pine cone textures or something for the ears. So it really had a different silhouette. So all of this brings me back to Google Chrome image search using the tools of a larger than eight megapixel search, opening up in new tabs, checking the images. So these could be interesting ears. These back ones are somewhat in focus, definitely a strange texture. I'm going to add these to my head folder, or maybe I make a separate ears folder for this reference. Here are some very odd pine cones that might make some interesting ears. Here is just an amazing plant. <laughs> nice photo, nice lighting. This could be useful as a texture in other places. So I might actually put that for the spinal ridge. Sometimes you'll find things as you're searching that you can use at other parts. Here's one that also might work for, for the tail, maybe a tip of a tail. I got a love of the colors. It's a little, um, little soft edged around the edges, but I can cut it out with the lasso and sharpen that. And then this one, just good old spiky texture. Might be helpful. Other reference I might want to use that I know will fit my sketch. So I had ideas, furry thick forelegs. So maybe, um, Grizzly bear, pause. Problem with bears is they're harder to photograph. Even in zoos, tough to get good photos I've tried. But I like them. Let's see, what are other interesting, so here's, here's might, might be a good example. This one might be good. Grizzlies have really recognizable feet. They're kind of odd looking, easy to work with. But the photos need to be good quality, and they aren't always. So I'm wary of these sites that download automatically. I always will check them in preview. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I want to view them actual size. Yeah, that one might be useful. And it makes me think of maybe anteater legs. Ah, oh, look at that claw, very nice. So our natural world has a lot of strange variety to it. Hedgehogs, there are also furry legs, maybe make a look at that. Surprised we don't have more anteater limbs. They're super furry. And if you want to do something with um, with cat parts, that's what dominates the internet. That's 99% of the internet. It's cat photos. Yeah, hedgehogs just don't have the strongest legs. So maybe beaver. Let's see. 
this is where books are helpful. The problem with uh, image sites and searches for images is that you need to know what you're looking for. Often just going into a library and just looking at wildlife books things will, will get you more inspired. Let's see, chameleon. But I do like how this gets you on tangents. So these aren't furry, but they're colorful. I need to find the right angles. And I think I'm just going to use what I have. So because I like doing this a lot, I tend to get too much reference for the budgeted time I have for this. And that's a bit of an issue. So even though there's likely better reference out there. If it doesn't, if the image doesn't drag and drop over, just right click and say save image as, and then really control where it goes. Always to the desktop, right? Because if you don't see it move over, it's not copying in. Okay, what other reference do I need? I need a tail. Because I'm on the lizard body, I think I want to go back to the crocodile tail. Something a little bit more substantial. See if I can find one at the right angle. One there that might be useful. Ooh, that's beautiful. And again, collect more reference than you need, but Try to be mindful of, of the time. There's usually not just the perfect thing. Instead, you build it out of different parts. I was thinking something like that might be useful. Yeah, it's pretty good. And sometimes, very often, I won't be able to be as ambitious as I initially intend because the things take so long. So this is like uh, Pixabay. This is a new one called PX here. And these are Creative Commons open, you know, public domain images, free for commercial use, no attribution required. So even though we're transforming these and making their them our own, never hurts to be able to use open, open source images. Okay, let's add it to our list here. Okay, so I'm going to add the legs now. In this assembly line fashion. It's good to have multiple legs to use, a lot of overlap. I'm going to grab all this. I wanted intentionally to have kind of the the scale texture and the fur texture that I can use together. I'm going to duplicate that, turn this off. And then we transform. And because I'm not trying to keep the joint, I can be a little bit more free in how I bolt this on. In fact, I'm going to match my sketch more than I match my reference. Maybe something like that. Now let's bring on this crazy hand from a kangaroo, even though I was looking for an anteater. It's nice to have a match set here. First, I'm going to use this one, cut around it loosely with a lot of overlap, duplicate, turn off the smart layer, scale it down, put it over the top. Now, even though they're not in a group together, I can use the Move tool and auto-select by layer. 
And as long as I hold down Command, I can select multiple layers. Usually. <laughs> so how do I kind of move them together? Well, if I select that layer, then hold down Command and select the other layer, layer 7, then they will move together. It's a way of kind of linking them temporarily. Okay, now I'm going to take all of this stuff so far, move it onto my sketch. least informed by my sketch. Okay. And especially for the joint here, oh, hold down command, not shift. There we go. About like that. Got that, that sense of the movement coming forward. Okay, now I'm going to move all these together. So move these layers that are turned on. I'm going to put them in their own group. This will be the torso group. That's another four references. So now I have eight total, and I only need five to meet the requirements of the assignment. But you often need more than what's assigned. So torso group. Now the torso group should go underneath the head group, right? So just like I can move layers up and down, you can move group folders up and down using command left bracket or right bracket. And now I'm going to move the head on top of oops, the whole head group. I have to select by group, not layer. I'm going to move that on top of my torso. And now I'm going to start blending those together. So now we're welding those two big parts. I can hold down shift and I can move them both off to the side so I'm informed by my sketch. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. Okay, how do we merge together? Well, before doing too much else, it's always good to play with the levels, the direct adjustments. So I'm going to switch back to auto-selecting by layer, and I'm going to try to bring some color towards the reds and the yellows to this hand, just a little bit. And if you push warms on one side, it's usually good to push cools on the other, so it looks full spectrum. Then you work all of them towards each other a little bit. Some levels here, I'm going to deepen the midtones just a little bit, brighten the highlights, because those scales are very reflective. Even though the fur is not going to be as reflective, I want it to kind of match. Then play with its color balance, doing a lot of direct adjustments. Yeah, that helps a lot. The highlights may be a little yeah, there we go. Then I can go back to levels and maybe deepen the shadows a little on that. Okay, then for these things, I, I kind of had those where I wanted them. So now I just have to merge these parts. And instead of working from the back forward, like I did with the landscape, I work from the top down. So I'm erasing first at 100% opacity with the soft eraser, getting rid of those hard edges, not worrying about the outside edge yet. That will be the last thing I do. Otherwise, I'd end up wasting a lot of work that's not necessary doing a lot of work it's not necessary. Okay, then switching to a lower opacity 